Hey people, Indrid here, 2v2, Hydris Chasm, blue team. McLean is a commando knob, infiltrating hero that shoots you, stabs you and blows you up. Orky style begins with a twin link shooter and knows how to use it, Death Skull's elite scheme here. Alongside, this translates as fashionable I believe, also known as Blood Rain this guy. So we'll call them that with a farcier support hero fighting in melee, some powerful buffs and control. The same Han elite scheme here for Blood Rain. Red team, after shock with a tech marine, starts off in ranged combat, puts us to good damage, can also support with structures and repair, Imperial Fist DLC here. And rounding off the teams is Stigma with a Hive Tyrant, a very durable hero because your objects cannot be suppressed with powerful support and disruption, fighting in melee by default with a basic synapse. I shall call you Salvador. On the east side against the far side, there are some points on the eastern edge here, very narrow areas on this map, pretty much everywhere. West side is also quite narrow, might be good for the commando if you can hit those stun bombs. Wild Banner goes up, Shooter Boy is trying to grab this power, it's going to be tough though. Good firing angle they have here, this Tech Marine. And they're going to tear through the models pretty quick, scouts grab the VP. Those Shooter Boys pretty much as low as they can get without dropping a model here gonna start dropping them pretty quick I think they're trying to get a decap on this power yep having to run that's a big deal that's much less darker to pour onto those scouts now the stun bomb is dodged sluggers not pushing in they need to get in there before shot oh, shotguns are here it's gonna be tough for McLean to win this fight I think stun bombs been used and the shotgun scouts are gonna shut down those sluggers they need to try and get the scouts out of here be a little bit aggressive with their ducker, try and get the scouts to leave. You can see they can't stand up to the damage. Scouts still in play though, Aftershock knows he needs the scouts here. Sluggers moving in now I think, but they're already quite low. They're going to get messed up by these shotguns. Look at that, just disintegrated into pieces. There was the actual shotgun blast and a big old retreat. It did kill one of the scouts. Killed like three shooters all in all I think. And the commandos off the field of course speaking of narrow areas there is this weird central part that you can use to get flanks but it can be quite dicey to get caught there on the power now is stigma with some former gaunts has double term against up we have double rangers for blood rain they can disrupt from long range with a kinetic pulse have the hollow fields ability to infiltrate their allies and of course they are snipers so they can pick off models and deal some good damage at range especially to Salvador themselves. Maybe we'll see the extended carapace to try and get in the back lines. We've got a Ravener brood on the way. They might need double Raveners. And look at this. Storm Boys for McLean. Aftershock still hasn't purchased anything. Looks like they're going for an assault squad. That's going to be interesting. Both of them jumping into the back lines. We need to try and keep those shooters separated and probably going to want to get burners up on these sluggers because they're going to be quite important with a salt squad around and indeed they are on the way triple rangers for blood rain and they did get straight onto the power as you can see rangers playing interference good kinetic pulse there there's the borrow strike from the ravener brood it's a pretty good one looks like guide is up on these guardians here starting buff from the farseer 30 percent more damage and range but they got a full retreat stigma approached well enough and got a full retreat Maybe they'll get some more Hormagaunts to try and run into the back lines if they don't want to spend on more Raveners. Yeah, and as you can see, it can be very difficult to hold these natural powers here. They're so close to the victory point. The ones on the west side are a bit more safe, but even though, even those can get hit quite easily. Storm Boys in retreat here. These guys have power melee weapons, so they are a threat to Marines early on. Look at this, the Assassin's Knife. Assassinate doing a big chunk of damage at the start of this fight now getting hits in also with the tripper shot of course So it's gonna be quite important for the commando to level up because he's got a bunch of abilities to juggle already Got some big shooters in for the shooter boys still no burners though for the sluggers I thought they'd go for burners before the big shooters But I guess having that suppression on demand is pretty nice especially if you can keep them separated Assault squad can only jump one of them and then he suppress them with the other create some space chain the suppression together and we do indeed have triple rangers up on the east side that could be quite nasty for stigma if they can 
use kinetic pulse to set up grenades. We do have battle equipment on one of the guardians. Gives them more health, a grenade, an energy shield, and fleet. Bashing some gens here. Well, the node anyway. Rangers hanging out. And here comes the hive tyrant Salvador. Now has an extended carapace ready to charge some fools down. I mean, even if he doesn't hit them, just getting Salvador into the back lines is going to be nice. There's the charge. Hits the farce, it hits some guardians. Going to take a bunch of damage though. There's Guide thrown up on the Guardians. They both have their battle equipment now. Looking for grenades. Farseer gets a good special. That's a good time to throw it. They didn't quite take advantage of that special attack. Borrow striking. Ravenous getting in there. The grenades. I mean, they took one model. Ravenous brood do pretty scary damage. Isn't it like 20, 22 DPS per model or something? It's, it's quite nasty. No, I, th I don't think it is. I think that's what it used to be. Back when you had to purchase... The ranged weapons for Raffiners, that's what it used to be. But I think it's like 18 DPS per model now. Still pretty damn good, it's more than a tactical marine. They do cost power, of course. 446 to 449 on the VPs, west side. Scouts now have a sergeant so they can spot the commando any sneaky ways with hide the boys and stuff. Did they get burners? Still no burners on the sluggers. Oh, we had a little dip in there. Little rotation to the east, now the sluggers and... Stormboy is coming back. They should jump right here. Stormboy should jump right here. They're backing off. Oh, they won't hide the boys. They don't know where the scouts are, of course. But they could have jumped earlier and did some good work, I think. Here comes the sneaky commando. Looking for an assassinate, probably. There's a stun bomb. Might stun his own guys. If not careful, there's a jump. Doesn't stun anything in the end. Commando needs to keep moving, surely. Shotgun blast coming in to counter initiate. And there's a counter jump. Yeah, it took a bit... Took a bit too long to get in there, I think. Needed to be a bit quicker on the offensive. Aftershock doing very well on this west side so far. Here come double shooters. It's a lot of damage. The attacks are quite low. The assault squad getting quite low. There's tripper shot and they kill one of the assault marines. Does tripper shot do damage? Or does it just make you fall down and get stunned? It looked like it did damage there, but it might have just been the shooter boys with their duck up. There's aiming, watch that to get the suppression. Stormboy's coming in. Those assault squad fellas need to get out of there, surely. There's a jump. When they get to tier 2 and get their knob leader, they can stun off that jump. Scouts get a decap. Attacks get away, okay. The scouts did drop a model, and they got a model off the assault marines. Wasn't too bad for McLean. And they go tier 2 in decent time. Looks like Blood Rain with all those ranges is going to be the last to get to tier 2. They got Triple Rangers up. Hollow fields on all of them. Double battle equipment. No war gear for the Farsi, but they did spend quite a lot. Especially since they got bashed on that side at least once. Stigma does not get more Ravenous up before Tier 2. Maybe we'll see a Tyrant Guard called in, because they do have a decent chunk of red here. I wonder how Triple Rangers do against a Tyrant Guard. That sniper PvP damage, how does it do against super heavy infantry armor? It might do okay. Especially with the range you can fire at. I'll have to get two or three volleys off before the Tyrant Guard even gets into range. McLean, I don't think they have anything queued up. Well, maybe they just queued something up right there. It might have been just squad leaders. Burners are in, and there's a knob leader on the way for the Storm Boys. They did get a decap on that side. Aftershock having to get their VP back. And Devastators on the field for Aftershock. A weird boy for McLean. That could be superbly good. If they can wait for the Assault Marines to jump and then stun them. And then swarm them with all the melee they've got. That's going to be very painful for them. Nob Leader in for the Storm Boys. Nob Leader is also pretty awesome for the Sluggers. Especially... Especially the weird boy, because they've got the triple shot. They could get two stuns in a row on something, potentially. Storm boy's getting counter-initiated quite badly. That's a good stun bomb, though. Really good stun bomb. Lots of duck. We have some stern guard veterans in here with hellfire rounds. There's a zap thrown in. Really good shot from the weird boy, too. It's a lot of damage, you know. That zap is jumping between units. Take out, takes out a stern guard veteran. 
Grid Boy having an instant impact. And look at this, Orbs of the Omnissiah. I wonder if that's to deny energy to the Commando and the Weird Boy, because there's no vehicles around, of course. Blood Rain with a Wraith Lord on the way. Going to come out swinging, and we do have a Tyrant Guard. Let's see if the Rangers can do some work to it here with their shot. I'm interested to see what kind of damage this does. The Guardians won't be able to do much, but that wasn't too bad. Grenade is decently well-timed. Look at that. Rangers doing some work against that Tyrant Guard. Ravenna Brood, still in a default ranged weapon state. Can they get another shot on the Tyrant Guard here? They have vision because the Rangers are there. Because the Farsi is there, sorry. Oh, but they shot the, they shot the Ravenna's there. Good damage. There's Guide up on one of the Rangers now. Get one of the Ravenna's down. Can they create some space to get another volley off on the Tyrant Guard? They can. Former Gaunts were trying to close the distance. Farseer gets a useless special. He's going to get eaten by the Tyrant Guard. Oh, tossed aside. Wasn't hungry. Now goes into Shield Wall. Here comes a Wraith Lord, though. Going for the Shuriken shoulder mounted. Now the Shield Wall gives it vehicle armor and some health regen. The Wraith Lord, the only thing here that can really damage it effectively. And I think it's got enough DPS to outdo the healing, I think. Yeah, it's going to get it. It's going to get it. One more hit might do it. One more. There we go. Bunch of levels. 50 red for taking down a Tyrant Guard as well. Pretty nice. The Sluggers do not have a Nob Leader. Where's the jump? There's the jump. Gets on the Devastators. That'll shut those guys down. Assault Squad getting in there. Warp Vomit from the Weird Boy. Now Sluggers can run at them. Got their burners, which are a couple of power weapons. Some friendly fire, though, from the Weird Boy. Needs to be careful of that. Yeah, but the Assault Squad got messed up there. Oh, no. Friendly fire might have saved those Assault Marines, and it might take out the Sluggers. Showing up is Stigma. Yes, yeah, Sluggers go down. That was really unfortunate. Weird Boy did such great work, but you need to retarget that guy when you warp vomit the Assault Squad. And they lost their Storm Boys as well. McLean lost a lot indeed. That engagement was going quite well at, some, at one point. Almost got those Assault Marines down. That's so close. Now get some support from Blood Rain. 361 to 367. Very even on the VPs. Tier 3 for Stigma and Tier 3 for McLean. McLean does have a decent chunk of resources. Stigma even more. Good stun bomb there. Salvador gets the cap. Dreadnought on the way for aftershock, though. I don't know if they used Assassinate there. So level 3 Commando is doing some good damage with that knife. On the power is Blood Rain. Did a good job splitting there. Used the Rangers to support and push the power. The Wraith Lord's got Guardians capping up. The east side turns completely blue. Nicely done by Blood Rain. Going to get a full bash. And they timed the cap perfectly. Look at that. Ormagaunts didn't want to close the distance anymore because of the grenade, maybe. A shield up in a very annoying spot. The Hive Tyrant could just walk through it. But taking shots from those rangers, they're hollow field in to infiltrate the Wraith Lord, which has got a decent chunk of XP already. Charging through. Breaks the shield. There's a little bit. It doesn't do huge amounts of damage, isn't it? Like seven... Yeah, seven piercing damage per second. But they typically only spend... One, one second in range of the charge, you know? So it doesn't really do much damage. It's more for the mobility and the disruption. Here's a Carnifex all of a sudden. What's your answer to this, Blood Rain? Wraith Lord's going straight after it. Rangers trying to run interference again. They're so good at that. And the Fast here with Gravity Blade. Oh, but mistimes it. Tried to get the Ravenous as they burrow strike, I think. But did it too early. And, and, and the Farseer goes down. Carnifex goes for Thornback. Gives it more hit points. And the ability to spawn Rippers. Wraith Lord standing up well to it so far. It does keep melee resistance even with a shoulder mounted weapon. On the west side I see Aftershock making some moves on the power. McLean though has a Knob Squad on the field. Still has the Weird Boy as well. And that's a nasty combo. Setting up a Knob Squad push 
with your AOE warp vomit stun. Wraithlord having to back off now. The Hive Tyrant staring intently at some food in the garrison there. Fine effects. Oh, tries to charge. Doesn't really charge very much though. Can get your charge stuck on things. Assault Squad barely getting out. The Dreadnought smacking power and that's a good tool to have against the knobs. This is Commandos coming in. Called in from the global bar of the Commando knob. And Commandos are freaking awesome. They've got Melter Gun. Oh, now Plasma Gun. Tech Marine. Weird Boy goes down. Have Signum Armor as well. So much for the Weird Boy helping out the knob squad. There's Tripper Shot. Has decent range Tripper Shot, eh? I always think it's really close range, but it's like 20 or so, I think. Looked like it there anyway. Here comes the Dreadnought. Knob squad could go after it. Don't really want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it, though. It's got melee resist and heavy melee damage and that kind of thing. Knob squad reinforcing off the HQ. East side, double Wraith Lords for Blood Rain. And this one has got a Bright Lance. It's getting shot on that Carnifex. Can it finish it off? It's really trying to. It might be that Salvador, the Hive Tyrant, needs to come and tie up, you know. Oh, there's a special attack and misses. Here comes Salvador. Carnifex will be healing up at base. He's trying to finish off the Ravenous, but they reinforce. And now we have a Venom Cannon Hive Tyrant. Powerful anti-vehicle ranged weapon. Well, anti-large target, I guess. Being tied up by the Wraith Lord. Carnifex goes after it now. Can they get this Wraith Lord down? Wraith Lord can't fight both of them. Taking Venom Cannon shots. The Carnifex, of course, is healing off the base there. Ravenous trying to get into the back lines and mess with the Rangers a bit. Wraith Lord maybe gets away. Levitation Field used well on the Ravenous Brood there. And we do have... Oh, final formation. They got the Wraith Lord. Here's the global nuke of Tyranids. Doing some damage as these towers burst from the ground. Also providing, providing some nice buffs around them. And they get both the Wraith Lords here. On the west side, I see McLean has broken through. Scouts are down for Aftershock. Devastators are down. The Dreadnought clearly got away, it looks like. Yep, both Wraith Lords down. Making some gains here, maybe Stigma. They still have triple rangers, which is pretty annoying. More commandos on the way. The Dreadnought, poor Dreadnought not being repaired. Commander's level 5, he's done some work, eh? Nob Squad probably did some work here. Almost level 3, these fellas. They are a menace. Tech Marine just repurchased themselves and goes straight to repairing the Dreadnought. Energy Denial, not really a tool you can use against Nobs. Do they even? No, they don't even have energy. Their abilities are powered by red resource. Commandos here turning into Mando Stabums. Yeah, we got some melee commandos. Their knob leader gets a heavy melee weapon, I believe. This was added in 298. And you get some funky grenades and stuff to chuck. We'll see how they do. Gonna be pretty good against the assault marines, I think. Scouts on the way to help repair and support that dreadnought going forward. There's a levitation. 284 to 298 on the VPs. Rippers get perfectly timed grenade on their face. Well, I'll take a tick, a quick swig of drink. Here comes the Carnifex, level 2. What have we seen now from Blood Rain, do you think? Fire Prism. Fire Prism could do a lot here. It needs to be careful of that Venom Cannon, though. Maybe just get a Bright Lance up or something, eh? Rocket launcher commandos helping out. Commando knob swinging. And the uh, Mando Stabber melee commandos have found some former gaunts who don't seem to be fighting back. I don't think they can get the uh, Carnifex down though. Commando's still firing on it, maybe. Charging Hive Tyrant. Level 4. Not sure why it charged there. It should be okay though. Run, Zabadol, run! I think he's alright. 
I think he's alright. Still no knob leader on these second commandos. Knob squad fighting an assault marine squad. Not a great fight there for those space marine fellas. But here comes a dreadnought to even it up. And look at that overcharged plasma tech marine. So much DPS. Got the signum for the marked target as well. Dreadnought levels to two. And tier three for aftershock. So we might see a dark age dreadnought buff on this thing. Seer council now for blood rain and a fire prism. There you go. Get both of them. Why choose? Commandos set up by a beautiful kinetic pulse from the rangers there. Now getting some damage on the dreadnought as well. But look at that. Commandos getting wrecked by the dreadnought as you may expect. There you get away. Fire prism can give chase maybe. Shooting at the stone guard. Stone guard are going to wipe if they're not careful. Can they get away? I think they're all right. And the Dreadnought is also all right. In fact, Blessing of the Omnisai is active right now to repair all allied vehicles, which is just a Dreadnought for now. Doesn't repair Carnifexes. effects. If you're wondering, 230 to 298, single cap for the red team. Lots of red around for nukes and stuff. Carnifex getting its way to level three, you know. Ripper's trying to annoy the Fire Prism by slowing it down. Salvador grabs the VP. There's the 2 to 1 for red. Blue team get their natural back. And maybe poke the power here. Some infiltrated knob squad. Did Aftershock lose the second scout or just not get them? I wonder. Would be good to have the have detectors back, eh? Because infiltrated knob squad is pretty scary. There is mark target on the knobs. There is a rocks thrown in. Just to mess with the stern guard, I think. Dreadnought is got. Dreadnought falls. Knob squad retreat. Job done. They have their huge jammers now. Makes them even scarier. Commando here to tie up that tech marine. There's those mellow commandos again. Can't remember what kind of grenades they get. Is it burners and... It might be burners and like a crack grenade, which maybe they used there on a dreadnought. I didn't spot it. East side. You've got two con effects. one with a venom cannon. Oh, looks like did they take out the fire prism? Can we see the remains of it? There it is. There it is. It might have been Salvador, though. There is Salvador. It's coming out of base. West side. Good pressure from the orcs. Most of the strike gets some work done, but those assault marine fellas have their work cut out. Can they get away again? I think they have, you know. I think they bloody have. Stern Guard having to back the hell off. Another level for the tech marine. Level 6, doing some really good damage. Can he get away? No, can't get away. 188 to 281. Blue team in the ascendancy, perhaps. Aftershock has taken a beating here. Down to two units tons of red but it's kind of so what do you want to get terminators when you're facing this i don't think you do it's, it's going to be tough there's not one unit that's going to turn this around for aftershock i mean terminators would have be nice to have but it's very expensive does it try and keep hold of their vp you know can tear through the light infantry at least with their storm bolters and stuff 188 to 255. The idea, of course, would be to don't lose your Terminators. Keep a hold of them. Make sure they don't drop models so you can save up for adding to your roster. Maybe get a tank alongside those Terminators. Some Devastators. Wouldn't be bad. Because there's no more Storm Boys here. Alright, Lance doing some work here. Anti vehicle weapon. Knob Squad on the v their own VP. And they are taking back their natural after shock. Any revive for the tech marine? No, nope. Salvador runs away. This is the is this a second seer council or the I think it's the second seer council we've seen. Is it the same? Maybe it's the same fellas. Maybe I'm going mad. I don't think they were wiped before. They're almost level two, so it must be the same fellas. Bar seer, what level are you? Level five now has these spirit stones to. Help support those Seer Council. 
Level 7 commander with his knife has been pretty badass, actually. Salvador is coming to revive, I think. Is that going to level him? Level 6, maybe. Come on, Salvador. Do the best revive you can. Does level to 6. Immediately starts firing that plasma gun. Is this a venerable dreadnought? It is. Venerable Dreadnought comes in for Aftershock. Did not expect that. There's an Orbital as well. Bright Lance is getting shots on the Dreadnought, which is going after the Knob Squad. This guy is unique to the Tech Marine. Has tons of hit points, as you can see. 1750. And you can upgrade this thing with Dark Age for 300 more. And, of course, it can also level. Gets up to, like, 26-odd, I think. 2600 when it's level 4. It's awesome. Oh, the commandos now have the knob leader with the... Oh, he gets a hammer, not a chopper. Gets a yum jammer. And yep, they've just chucked their orky crap grenade. Oh, is there no... Is there no visual when it goes off? That was weird. Didn't seem to be a visual effect when it went off there. 188 to 191. Emperor's Fist misses. Venerable Dreadnought charges through. Bad news for these guys to hang out here. Even with that heavy metal weapon, I don't want to fight a venerable dreadnought. Can it see them, though? There we go. Their inspiration on kill. They are infiltrated while they decap, but not while they cap. And they need to flee. Sneaky commando play, though. Got the decap still. East side. Rangers are a-going. Still got the triple rangers up. Where are the seer council, though? Coming out of base with some fire dragons alongside them, it looks like. And double guardian weapon teams with double bright lances to help deal with the carnifex stampede they're facing here. Another carnifex on the way. That is a time field. Slow down the carnifexes, makes them unable to attack. Bright lances can do some work. Guide up on these guys. Look at the range. Pretty good. Pretty good damage. Can Stigma deal with those double Bright Lances? Still over here. Some repairs for the Venerable Dreadnought. Does have the Dark Age of Technology now. For 300 more health. And improves the Inspiration, apparently. Now a 35% damage increase on Inspiration. Holy crap. For 20 seconds? That's crazy. That is actually quite crazy. Didn't realize how mad that inspiration gets. Ravna Brood burrow striking to get the VP back. Knobs versus Carnifex. So level three Carnifex, you know. Up over 2,000 hit points. And we got a strangle thorn on the third one now. Charging through, maybe. Nope. Turn off formation is pretty nice, though. Some gravity blade action on some termigants, which seems like a strange way to use that. Really want to deal with those termigants, eh? Down she goes, the Farsia. The commandos level. These guys are level three. The melee fellows are level three. Are they limited to one, those guys? These guys get in their commando knob. 182 to 114. On the VPs, east side still quite blue. These guys should be shooting at the power, maybe? I don't know if they can even bash it quickly enough. Got some scouts up for aftershock to help repair the vehicle and stuff and provide some detection. Can the commando get to this Farsia? They're being crowded out of their own VP right now. Bright lances will set up. We've got the fire dragons there as well. And there's a rock thrown in for McLean. Is that a Eldritch Storm? It is. Looks like both of the nukes were pretty well dodged, all in all. It did push some of the Carnifexes into a more dangerous position. One of them is very low. Needs to keep moving. Don't stop, buddy. There he goes. He's off. He's off. All the Carnifexes survive, but they surely need to march back to base now and heal up. So they're going to be out of action for a little while. 
wonder if it's worth getting a zone throat to support them or maybe just getting a swarm lord up to help them move a bit quicker maybe neuro throat could also do some work of course always great to have out late game his range is still hanging out maybe you should split them up a bit so you get a bit more vision at least blue team get the natural vp back 161 to 108 a lictor on the way for stigma got a rocket launcher commando knob now needs to help shoot down these carnifexes i guess here comes a looted tank looks like they ran back to aftershock space to get some healing stone guard almost level four venerable almost level three Vanguard veterans had their level resetted when they got the Vanguard upgrade. Gives them a, couple, a bunch of power weapons, helps them fight the knob squad a bit more effectively. They do keep the merciless strike as well. Big fight here. Lots of anti vehicle damage pouring onto that venerable dreadnought. It's got Blessing of the Omnissiah going. Vanguard need to jump. There it is. They get both of the right lances in the jump. What the Fire Dragons and the Commando Leader. And the Komodo knob, and down it goes. There's too much AV for that poor Vendred to deal with. Stoicism now active, but it does go down. Looted tank is here. It's so narrow. It's so narrow. Can they get some damage on those Carnifexes? Now they can. One. Oh, both the Bright Lancers stayed in play, I think. Or did that guy get into the webway? I think that guy's inside the webway, but it's just a bug the visual. They're going to get at least one of these Carnifexes, I think. That guy charges through. Oh, it was still there. I think it was actually stuck on the webway. It's just been destroyed. Did both of them get destroyed? No, one of them survived. Carnifex does go down. Knob squad. Oh, they're not going after the others. Waiting for some backup, I guess. And here it is. 148 to 62. Red team with a 2 to 1. Fighting hard here. We've got some Gretchens up for McLean. Pretty good bioplasma shot. Even the Commander knob backs off. He wasn't even hit by it. Where are the Gretchens? What are they up to? Oh, they're repair Gretchens. Are they? I don't think they are. They seem to be repairing. I thought they got little wrenches when they were the repair Gretchens. I didn't know they could repair by by default really slowly. I think that's what it is. I think when they become the repair Gretchen fellas, they repair a lot quicker. I think that's the, I think that's what happens. Fire prism on the way for blood rain. Where is that Lictor at? Can we find him? There he is, sneaking up to the VP. Salvador's down, by the way. Takes a shot when he starts the decap. Now will be spotted while he caps, though. I don't know if he can tank this, buddy. 109 to 62 on the VPs. A double cap for red. Gets kinetic pulsed off there. They have both of the naturals. Got the carny effects. Yeah, the carny effects are still on the west side. Camping on the VP kind of thing. Here comes Blood Rain with the assist. Can they hold the east side while they do this? The Rangers are back on it. Over there. Going to be really close. 79 to 62 on the VPs now. Commando sneaks around to get the turret taken care of. Look at the damage. That was one shot from his rocket launcher. Three shots and it's down. Would have been two if he was level 10 maybe. Carnifex falls as well. Mark target on the knob squad. Level 4 knob squad though. Tyranno formation. Spirit stones goes off. The spiritual right heal. Really nice thing to have alongside a knob squad. Farseer gets tossed around. But a knob squad made their way into the back lines. And there's Love the Daka from the commandos. What is that Carnifex doing back there? Down goes the fire prism. They got it. I guess that's what they were doing. Levitation field. And it can still smack them in the air. Look how nasty that is. I don't know if those stern guard are gonna get away. Or maybe. I think they made it out. I think they made it out. 
Level 4, that's why they survived. The Carnifex does fall. Looted tank. Oh! Red team have conceded. They lost too much in that last fight. The looted tank barely survived. Well done, blue team. Level 10 commando knob here for McLean. They missed their like first two or three stun bombs. But after that, pretty damn solid commando play. Level 6 Farsia. I loved the triple rangers into double wraith lords. It was a lot of fun. Level 8 Tech Marine. Got me a, dread, a venerable dreadnought on the field, so it's all right in my book. And Salvador, the mighty Hive Tyrant, has fallen at the end. Level 7. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.